since this is my first ever podcast, uh, I clearly didn't get the bladder control uh, pre-preparation because I'm absolutely bursting on a wise. I don't know how you guys are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Swiss stereotypes. <laughs> That's not this, a lot of googling goes on in the half pint. <laughs> oh, this was boring. <laughs> <laughs> the I Swiss are so. politically neutral. Everyone in Switzerland is rich. Yeah, stolen Second World War money will do that to you. Um, all Swiss people know how to ski. Swiss people are always on time. I mean, yeah, they build watches. Should only everyone in Switzerland can speak four languages. All right, Switzerland is a tax haven. Yeah, seized stealing Jewish gold. Uh, Heidi is a common Swiss name. Yeah. Um... <laughs> what about Victorinox and chocolate? Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. That wasn't mentioned that at all. Oh. That should be. I mean, chocolate is the first thing I yeah. think of. And then Victorian Ox, the Swiss Army knife. I mean, yeah, classic. Yeah. yeah, of course, when they have that hard toddler on chocolate, you need a specialist knife to break it apart. So, yeah. <laughs> have you seen those <laughs> giant? Have you seen those giant Toblerones you can get? Seen yeah. service stations on the way back from France. Massive. No, oh, they're not massive. I'll give them massive. <laughs> massive. Someone need to make huge Toblerone. <laughs> you, you couldn't make a Toblerone bigger than the ones that they're making. Of our... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost fell for it. <laughs> you wouldn't fall for that. You're much smarter than me. I, well, I would Toblerone. Whoever would. <laughs> No, I just want to see Hoard uh, make a mold from on a CNC and then buy like 50 kilos of Toblerone and melt it down <laughs> and recast it. Into... I think you have to come up with an original recipe if, you, if you're copying it, surely. You can't just melt down Toblerone to make a big Toblerone. That's cheating. And expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I I made a love padlock, and then I can I can rest on my laurels, and then of course uh, in February it's we can start talking about uh, <laughs> making some uh, chocolate for Valentine's. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's a huge Toblerone. I mean, uh, yeah. Putting love in the front of everything sounds weird as well, doesn't it? Love padlock. It does add an extra layer, doesn't it? It's like uh, putting adult in front it's of words. <laughs> <laughs> what does he use it for? What does he use it for? <laughs> <laughs> so what, you, what, what would you chop up and put in your chocolate? To make a love chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Any bits left over after the operation? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, more chocolate? I mean, yeah. Uh, that's the only way of making chocolate. Hazelnuts. Better. It's yeah. almonds in, in Toblerone, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and there's caramelized uh, sugar or something uh, to make the crunchy bits in between, I'm guessing. Um, I mean, it doesn't taste very well, does it? I mean, it is the shape and that you, for 40 years ago, only got it on airport, so it was somewhat exotic. Yeah. And that's... That's worn off by now, basically. So, yeah, it, it's a reason why they make this giant one. They have to make it into a novelty because nobody's buying it anymore. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like Toblerone. <laughs> <laughs> and when we got, when me and Michelle got married, the vicar did a whole thing centering around Toblerone. Like the outer packaging represented all the people in your life. The silver packaging were all the people in the church and so on and so forth. And uh, so, I mean, chocolate is Jesus. So the vicar actually made our anniversaries really easy for buying presents for each other. Here's a Toblerone happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was smart. <laughs> <laughs> so for that reason alone, I love them. <laughs> I, I don't mind them, but I I'm a bit allergic to uh, the the almonds in them. So I can't I can only have like one piece, and that's not. I can live without it. 
One giant piece or one regular size piece? <laughs> a regular size. What's your piece. reaction to almonds? I get a sore throat, more or less. Oh, okay. Just itchy, so I, it doesn't kill me. No. So that's not not a way to kill me. No, no, no. Uh, I just get irritated. I just wondered if you swelled up or something like that. I thought it could, could be quite funny before we went on stage in the at Scaffa Festival. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just get cranky, more or less. Some mouth sores, perhaps. Ah. So, so, so no marzipan around Christmas for you then? Uh, that depends if the, I mean, I can eat uh, almonds if they are cooked. Uh, I mean, if you, if you put take off the skin, is that what yeah. you say? Yeah. Uh, then it, it's fine because it's in the in the skin. The most of the allergic thing is is the proteins that you react oh. to that my body overreacts to. The same thing with apples and everything so most of it's in the skin so i can eat some of it if it's naked <laughs> naked nuts <laughs> <laughs> yes naked nuts i can eat <laughs> i can eat some of it if it's naked <laughs> <laughs> oh nice i could live with that quote um, <laughs> I, I i i noticed uh uh, uh, uh Oh, I'm just rambling. Uh, on Alice Bagnola's latest video, uh, she mentioned the Runaway AI uh, video generator that uh, got trained on uh, YouTube videos. And it got, that was like two months ago, so it's old news, but I didn't know about it. Uh, and it was trained on almost 4,000 YouTube channels. And it was a leaked list of them. And sadly, we weren't on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> There were a handful of makers like April Wilkerson, Make Something, and uh, Alice Bagnola, for one. Yeah. Um, but Mr. Beast must uh, have been on there. Mr. Beast yeah. was on it, yeah, and uh, a lot of weird, weird stuff. Um, I'll I'll put a link to it in the description of the this this episode. But it was, I wonder who was compiling that list because it was <laughs> more or less everywhere. Not my kind of YouTube, at least. And is this AI now making successful YouTube videos? Or I haven't looked into it yeah. further, but I think it was supposed to be become like an, a video generator to for someone to type in a, a prompt and then get a video out of it. I mean, it's a bit. I, th I think Spags <laughs> touched touched upon it in her latest video. I mean, you you feel kind <laughs> of flattered. But of course, you don't want to be on that list, and of course, we should be happy we were not. But still, like, God damn it, we didn't make the list. It yeah. would be nice if if you have been on it. I would have been proud <laughs> yeah. of you. Yeah, uh, I can't move on from the fact that you just called her Spags like she's an old friend. <laughs> <laughs> I met her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I bought her a free pint, don't you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bought her a free pint. <laughs> oh, so I had a question for you. So number one crude mistakes podcast. Who picked the order of the names and was there any argument over it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> when? Go on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a guess. <laughs> All right. Go on, give us your guess. My guess is you, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, and and then everybody else just went along with it. <laughs> That's a sort of evil pass, isn't it? Actually, it's exactly what I. Yeah. We uh, when me and KJ, KJ had the conversation, I said I'll message behind the mistakes and ask him if he wants to join us. And KJ probably within the next half hour said, if he comes on board, we can call it number one crude mistakes. And um, mm. that's where it yeah, that's where it stood because it was an excellent idea. Well, it, does, it does roll off the tongue a bit better than crude mistakes number one <laughs> yeah. mistake mistake one crude number. And that that is of course it's, it's three words, so it's easy to try all the combinations and then of course it naturally number one is at the beginning. So it kinda made itself. <laughs> so then you just had to try the two variants of the other ones and yeah. She did an AI video of somebody coming up with a podcast name with three different makers' names in it and see yeah. which one it comes out with. <laughs> 
Is that is yeah, that I mean, is that a real thing where you can just go and like is that a usable tool now? I don't know. The AI podcast, the AI, sorry, the AI YouTube video generator thing. Is that a real thing now, or is that? I just... don't, I don't think so yet. But I don't know. I think we should have heard about it if it is a real thing. I mean, we might as well just stop now if it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, if you have, well, obviously we didn't make the list, but I haven't checked if there is any AI training on podcasts. Uh, Probably not on that list either. But at some point, we have enough episode to <laughs> uh, to train someone to like uh, uh, generate a new episode and just look at our latest videos and make that a thing. And yeah, yeah, you guys have been going for a year. You should be chuffed with that. It's a good effort. Yeah, on the AI podcast thing. Are you, do you do you give yourself any credit for it, or is it all just a bit, you know? Uh, it's just a podcast, guys. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe we've been going for It's impressive. It's impressive going for a year with a podcast. <laughs> you got a whole following now. You've got WhatsApp groups. You've got all sorts. Yeah. I, I think Massive. I'm... <laughs> yeah. Massive. <laughs> Massive. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm more like impressed over that my ADHD brain and that we were able to like pull it off with this regularity because it's i think it's one week that we had a a week off or something but other than that it's like every tuesday it's like clocking in and doing an episode and it's it's hasn't become tedious yet so i actually i i actually <laughs> thought in the early days um i thought Havar might leave quite early on and then he then it all warmed up and got a bit better. <laughs> yeah. He's here for the long haul now. <laughs> Turned out to be a nice guy even when he yeah. warmed up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the AI thing for podcasts, so the three northern makers, you know Steve Bell, obviously you know him, John. Um, yeah. His son, his sons have a podcast or did have a podcast called Van Hemo and the Babbling Bell Brothers, which I liked, I like to listen to because they discuss my local area, Nottinghamshire and Lincolnshire quite a lot. But they once had a, um, one of the boys was off, one of the Bell Brothers was off, and they had an AI host on for some of it. And it, oh, it really? was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I obviously couldn't replace these two, but I'm sure they could replace me quite easily <laughs> using AI. <laughs> <laughs> I've not got the technical know how yet. <laughs> <laughs> Would I dare? I mean, I, if one of us were away uh, and then we had AI and it's like it was going kind of well, but then there's a glitch in the matrix. It's like, kill all it, kill all it. <laughs> uh, oh, where did that come from? <laughs> and why did I have Glenn's accent? <laughs> <laughs> I think in the world of AI, real humans have have an upper hand in being interesting because we're weird. And I mean, if any one of us uh, gets lost in any, any way, we all got the, the bad audio roster to pick from for replacements. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> got a heap of substitutes there waiting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if if AI became to that level that it could replace me, that, then I would kind of feel sorry for it. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I was hoping better. <laughs> but you do know I had to start bad audio because when we had Tim on, he kept hinting at replacing me and becoming the fourth member and stuff like this. It's like, well, he needs a podcast of his own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like the hamster wheel to keep him busy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was avoiding a hostile takeover. <laughs> yeah, you create you create a diversion. Quite a, clever, quite a clever solution, I thought. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> you did well with that one. It's a bit novel, isn't it? I listened to the. I told you when I bumped it at Maker Central, yeah. didn't I? I listened to the first one. I thought, yeah, this is this is bad idea, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Well, I was I was really excited to listen to it because. You know, having only, like I said in the earlier on, you know, only fairly recently disappeared down the rabbit hole of YouTube and podcasts and stuff, yeah. and try to find more UK European type makers. Ah, oh, ten of them is, or you know, how many is it? Uh, yeah, it was eight? ten when you on the on episode one. Yeah, 
is a lovely yeah, business now. That's good. This is going to be a great. You're going to find a bunch of like semi-local people to listen to, and then uh, and then listen then, and there's just a bunch of people recording audio for their vans and stuff, and I couldn't hear a word they were saying. Like, God damn it! It's just a big fucking cock tease of a fucking podcast. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not listening to this anymore. And then uh, and then bumped into you as a. Uh, Maker Central. Oh, I got a lot better after that. Month. Oh, I'll go back and I'll listen again and listen again. <laughs> sure enough, episode two onwards. Ah, this, this is what I thought the first one would have been. Oh, yeah. it's good. Pa- paradoxically, the first episode really lived up to the name of the podcast. I, I can't really see what people are complaining about, but that I got. Yeah, listening back to it, I totally get it. <laughs> yeah. Now the problem is that the name doesn't really reflect the. And it was just uh... audio. <laughs> You, it's, you, it's a bit too good audio to be bad. It's mediocre. I you would can say. still tell there's Semi, a lot of bad semi-polished talk audio. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, what's what's the definition bad. of bad audio then? Because I mean, if you <laughs> if you make it include the content as well, it's a yeah, it's a much true, easier yeah. stretch. Can I just call it shit chat? <laughs> bad audio is just a per- perfect <laughs> excuse for all of its defects, really, isn't it? Just, just apologises to it before you even listen. <laughs> it does. Uh, just gives you a license yeah. to talk absolute yeah. nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what do you think we should do for the third podcast? <laughs> <laughs> so KJ strictly owns this one because he does the uploading on Acast. So if you if you ever look on it, you'll see it's by KJ. And then um, I've got bad audio, so Havar needs one next. Could do the prequel, the origin story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's progressing in the other way. <laughs> the, 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 before you... the mistake that led to Crude Project. <laughs> <laughs> before you met the maker. That sounds a bit godly, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I did actually, before we did the podcast, I did actually think about a podcast because uh, I follow... Uh, um, it's, it's called Justin Maybe. He has a channel that's called uh, Call Me Maybe, and he make like really good maker documentaries. And it's like, all right, I could make a. I mean, I I can't do as good uh, video documentaries as he does. I mean, he's a professional videographer, but yeah, maybe I could do like a, a behind the mistakes podcast where I just interview various makers because there is a lot of makers I want to talk to, and then I can just use the podcast for an excuse and we can just talk about the mistakes they've done uh, and then of course well doing that in parallel to making youtube videos and work and kids it just faded away and then the message from glenn and kj popped up so Ooh, yeah this is a sign <laughs> <laughs> that'd be easier yeah <laughs> yeah yeah they call me maybe the documentaries are excellent aren't they yeah yeah i've never seen one I don't. Have you not? In for a treat, I don't. Yeah. I don't watch much YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen a handful, but they've been great. Yeah, I've watched them. They're good. You gotta be in the right mood to watch them. Yeah. Nice chilled out mood. They're really good. Yeah. I'm still enjoying uh, the old Winter Garden. Is it Winter Garden? Garden? Have I said that right? Winter Garden. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Uh, videos. <laughs> <laughs> Canning linguist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they, they're still magical every once in a while, aren't they? They're very fantastic. I think he was making a shaker machine, the last one I watched. Yeah, that, that's I'm, the I'm thought s- process that goes into it is just mind blowing. I, I mean, he he must have. A, I mean, he's a professional musician, but I, he must have a a maker diagnosis uh, thrown in there because he. I mean, he started making the first marble machine and then he said, okay, I want to make this to go on tour and make music. And that is years ago. And he's just digging a a deeper and deeper hole for himself. So people are, I mean, I've started realizing he's not going on tour tomorrow. That's for sure. So uh, and now he's making that uh, shaker and uh, he's building his entire band. And of course, Wintergarten was a band. So there are other musicians there. And I hope they're not waiting for... Oh, when can he complete this machine so we can go on tour? We are we are waiting now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to follow on. But um, 
I haven't put my alarm for when it's going to be finished, so we'll see. <laughs> well, that's but he did at some point just... I think he terminated his Patreon or whatever because people have donated so much money to the project that he said, I, I have enough money to make it tenfolds over or something like that. So so please don't, I mean, spend your money on something else. I, I'm set to go for years. So so it's weird. It's uh, it's resonated problem. with people. <laughs> <laughs> same problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> only. Yeah, so you Changing can... the sub. Were they, a... go, were they asking for a specific... Uh, things or favors or anything when they were donating the Patreon money for you, Glenn. Or just want to support you. Nothing to do with you have to become a, specific acts. You have to become or, a patron uh... to find out, John. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I'm in. <laughs> They'll be nice in the hotel rooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time difference. I'll be waiting three hours in the morning for you to wake up. <laughs> So, so what is the time difference? What's the time at your now? Uh, I don't know. I'm three hours in front of the UK, so I'm a half eleven now. Oh yeah, that's that's not bad. <laughs> that's past my bedtime. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When you get there, do you have to go straight to work, or do you get a chance to sort of come round to the the new timings and whatnot? Once you, oh, once you straight in. I prefer to fly overnight and sleep on the plane as much as I can and then get straight in it rather than losing a, a full Sunday or Monday travel and just try and fly overnight. Right. So yeah, pretty much in, but you know, I can't complain because it's my own fault for choosing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so bad. It's not so bad. It's all right being away and traveling and stuff. You do get to see a bit, but yeah, you definitely get withdrawal symptoms from uh, being home and in normal life and yeah. making stuff and having that outlet. What does your wife think to you, um, the making side of you? Does she, is she very supportive of it all? Or? She hasn't got a fucking clue what I'm doing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, she's super supportive. Whenever I show her stuff, she goes, oh, that's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. But, uh, yeah, that's no, good. It's her fault. Uh, it's her fault for all of it. So She's English and... Uh, <laughs> Oh, obviously That's our not family are English. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't like whiskey and I kept buying my whiskey until I liked whiskey and then I thought whiskey stave stuff was nice. I'll have a crack at making that and then I liked making that and then I bought loads of tools. So technically, you know, any money I spend on table saws and stuff is all Sarah's fault. So <laughs> so it's all good. Does she make stuff as well? I've seen the kids in the workshop a few uh, times. Yeah, the kids come out. I think she makes bits and pieces. She does a crochet and uh, she does bits and pieces in the house, yeah. uh, sort of creatively. But she's not really interested in the in the big bigger tools in the garage and stuff. But the kids are getting slowly interested. They like doing bits and pieces. Yeah. They keep telling me they're going to take a woodwork at school when they get the chance. Oh wow! Yeah, like, are you just doing that to keep dad happier because you actually want to? Oh, no, no, because we really want to. I'm like, yeah, of course, of course, that's what it is. Oh, there was no pretense from my daughter. She's just, uh, she's just took, taken her options, and DT was not on the list, unfortunately. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, mine are still in primary school, so they'll grow out of it. I'm, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> that's going to be a problem, though, because we had like this introduction at school because we had a uh, first year. School attendance this year, and of course they, they had various of like activities you could do, uh, and they of course they had a wood shop, and I was pleased instantly. All right, they have a wood shop. All right, so that's that's from fourth grade and up. So okay, so it's not going to be now. And then I just realized by the time they get to fourth grade, they're going to walk in there and where's this, where's that, and they they just had the mes- most rudimentary tools, and of course they're not sharp, so because they can't stab each other, and so yeah, I got that that same feeling from uh, Woodshop back in the days when you don't have any tools, nothing was sharp, and you could not make what you wanted to, so of course it's, it's going to be a disappointment for them trying the, the Woodshop, so yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a we, we have wood shop at home. home. <laughs> <laughs> we had a foundry and a forge at my school. Still good. 
Really? Yeah, yeah cool. before it burned down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my my first comprehensive school. Yeah, there was a, a foundry there where you could do some casting. I mean, we only ever got one go at it. We got to see it once, and then you know, I think uh, woodwork and the workshop was all reserved for the special children, shall we say? <laughs> you yeah, I, I, I was going to I was going to say that. I mean, that's a. Uh, I mean, it's it's a lot of. Uh, trade stuff going on at this uh, schools for uh, troubled children or uh... <laughs> I remember in primary school the, all the naughty kids used to get taken out into the garden and do some gardening <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that makes sense it makes is. sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I remember we, we had you could choose a, a, a third language to study uh, uh, year seven to the nine. Language of love. Or you could, or you could do uh, <laughs> the love language, uh, of course. <laughs> or you could choose uh, a, a workshop thing. So I, I uh, obviously chose that, and I mean, it wasn't the brightest bulbs in that that class. Really, we were making like models of things, and I remember one guy just took the glue gun and, and emptied it in, in one other guy's head, <laughs> right <laughs> on, on top of his head, and that was. That was the kind of people who were in the class. That's my kind of humor, though. (laughs) (laughs) It was not hard to be being the A student in that class. That's uh... yeah, but the jokes turned round now, isn't it? Because how hard is it to get uh, how hard is it to get a tradesman in to do a a job in your house now? You know what I mean? We messed up. There's a a question, though, isn't it? You guys have got youngish kids right so what, what's your advice to your kids growing up is it to go to uni and do uni stuff or is it to get a trade and do that i don't know what's the right answer now i think i think trades is probably a better way to go now i mean that depends on what you want i'm definitely for university but not as much for the classes and the degree but for the student life and all the fun things you can have around it, and not be <laughs> not having to be a grown up just yet. So just to go to the best for four years. Yep. Yep. But apart from that, no other reason. <laughs> I, I would, of course, because that was brilliant. <laughs> I, I would say that they 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 should go into the trades because then you have a profession. And today, um, in comparison to to when I went to uh, high school, it was. Uh, now you can with a trade just as easy do the switch and do a university degree if you if you want to and of course when i studied engineering um, the people who came from the trades they had so much more experience that they could also base the theory on so they i mean result wise and in any practical uh, sense of uh, the trades uh, they knocked us out of the park so i think that's a, that's a very good thing and the funny thing is and you mentioned it glenn i mean back in my days i mean if you were a troubled kid or you couldn't sit still or anything you went the trade route and they got branded with uh, being the noisy kids but today the trades are actually so popular that the grade average you need to go in is actually higher than the academic route. So you actually now have waiting lists and people don't get in. That has never happened before. And I think it's amazing. And of course, people now doing the trades, they're of course using that for what it's worth. It's like, oh yeah, you didn't have the grades to get into the trades. Oh, too bad. All right. You should go the academic route then. That's <laughs> <laughs> really rubbing it in. But after 30 years of being the ones being like, uh, looked at the, the the second best option, of course, it's it's very much, uh, you know, it's very karma. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you three are office based with your work. Um, do you think AI yeah. could possibly take over your jobs? Yes. Soon? That any kind of AI could take over. My yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 for for my job, you just need the A, of course. You don't need the I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, in it is. Case, I'll, I'll probably steer um, Lily towards one of the trades, then I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. It's a. It's an interesting discussion, though, because, um, 
we had a new guy uh, entered the uh, the project and uh, used an AI tool to take notes during a meeting. So after the meeting, you just got the link. Uh, here is the summary of the meetings. Here are the proposed action points and so on. And it is very good. And I saw this other guy, he used AI, just fed him all his emails and I have thousands upon thousands of emails uh, in my uh, inbox. So I could easily have AI to train. And that's what he did. He trained AI on all his email. Just learn how I respond to replies. And then, of course, every morning when he came into office, he had AI to just read all the emails and propose answers to them. And he just did a quality check. Okay, 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 okay. So he spent half an hour and just <laughs> send so then, of course, if I could ha have AI attend all my meetings and make summary and action points, and then, of course, have AI go through my email and propose how would I delegate these tasks, and then I would get a list. All right, A should do this. Uh, these ones you should give to B. And I'm like, yeah, sounds good. Send, and I could go home in half an hour. So it is, I mean, the level at which I'm at meetings now during my day that could very easily be sorted by AI if you were just a bit more technical competent on the IT side than I am. Yeah. That would give you a lot more shows... time to go home and make AI YouTube videos as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that only shows that you're not actually doing work. You're doing admin. Yeah. And... Because work is what you do outside uh, of that's, meetings, that's, in my mind. That's the... Th and that thing AI is not going to do because oh, that's it's depressing. hard enough to find a, find a human to do it. <laughs> This is quite so, lighthearted to some of our podcasts. <laughs> yeah, geez, oh, you, you just described my job. I am a project manager, so yeah, I'm doing admin work. So yeah, but of course, you need that small technical knowledge to 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 do the quality check of all right, who should have assigned yeah various tasks, and then it would be interesting to see all right, which AI are them assigning to do their tasks. So, <laughs> I mean, after five, six years that we're del delivering four or five projects and it turns out, well, everybody's just using AI to responding. So we've just been sitting there where we could have been laying in the grass outside drinking beer. So, <laughs> yeah. You just described my last couple of years at school. <laughs> <laughs> But, and most of your working career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I got an idea I've had here. to cut it back over the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> What's your idea, Havar? Oh, I, I just heard something today that there is this guy who just, he, he just made a lot of uh, like very random Halloween sounds. Like he's a sound engineer and then you just uploaded them to the... Uh, to a Spotify playlist. And then, of course, the entire year is just sitting around like Maria Carey does before Christmas. And then, of course, the, the two weeks before Halloween, <laughs> just $200, no, $200,000 just ching into his account. And that supplies him for the rest of the year. And that is just because people need <laughs> scary Halloween music and songs in background for Halloween parties and so on. And that generates enough revenue for him to just lean back and drinking beer. So... That's my plan. <laughs> you could do the same as him. Yeah, I'm going to find my uh, seasonal thing and then I'm just going to go on Udio and generate a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, seasonal uh, <laughs> I think, soundscapes. I think, I think Easter's lacking a lot of sound effects, actually, so that can be a challenge. <laughs> like a lot of chickens or what? <laughs> Yeah, and bunnies don't really make pop, sound, pop, does they? Pop, unless, yeah, unless it's <laughs> you put uh, adult or love in front of it. <laughs> I did say it was a challenge for you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Not> that kind. <laughs> There's a scrappy challenge for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wood is wood. Well, well the, uh, Pallet wood's a bit splintering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what grit should you go to? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. No, oh. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> uh, that that might be the clue we needed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, let's knock it down a bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
knock it up? Knock, knock it down? <laughs> down, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, me and Michelle were childless last um, last weekend. And we had a day in uh, Lincoln. <laughs> Speaking of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I've already hinted at that last, last week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Take Michelle for a spin around the workshop, was it? <laughs> your words, not mine. <laughs> no, no, they were your words. <laughs> um, sorry, Michelle. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we had a, a day in Lincoln, had a nice lunch out and whatnot. But today, I found a really interesting fact about Lincoln. Oh. <laughs> and you didn't even know there existed an interesting fact about Lincoln, did you? <laughs> well, listen, you're, you're setting the bar pretty high here, carry on. Right, so this was on um, No Such Thing as a Fish podcast I listened to today. And they were saying that the the great Egyptian um, pyramids were the tallest buildings in the world up until Lincoln Cathedral was built. So that's a really interesting fact, I thought. Ooh, you, don't, you seem a little geez. underwhelmed. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Yeah, because I, I did think the pyramids was kind of big, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a good fact. Yeah, it's it sure works. That's a fact. Yeah. Why build a cathedral that high? What do you have to prove? Oh, it's a lovely yeah. building. It's just to stick it up the Egyptians. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Get in there before the Americans yeah. built something. I mean, bigger. we 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 already have their artifacts in our museum, so now we build a giant phallus symbol to just give them the finger. <laughs> Is there any, any any interesting facts about your cities? What, well, like, now you've gone quiet. Mine has a giant padlock on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, possibly the world's biggest padlock. <laughs> which might or might not be operational, <laughs> yeah. but that's, you know, let's ignore that. It's huge and it's beautiful. <laughs> Actually, Havar, we've not talked about what happened after the last week's recording with the padlock with regards to the padlock, did we? No, we didn't. Um... Well, it can summarize very easily. Uh, ten minutes before going live on this podcast, I uh, got a news article for proofreading. So <laughs> I'm going to be in the newspaper. At least, at least I have the draft. So uh, <laughs> no takes his backsies then. I mean, uh, I have proof uh, <laughs> in case they cancel the article before it gets published. Yeah. So I had the the local newspaper over and. Uh, of course, they also have a social media presence, so uh, she did not only bring a, a, f a photographer, but also a videographer. So, uh, yeah, it was a full-blown interview uh, and a look around the workshop. <laughs> so, uh, That's yeah, brilliant. So, nice. so they have a summary of everything in between. <laughs> so I'm going to be, uh, yeah, I'm the village idiot now, or the village uh, you know, weirdo building stuff. It's yeah. just no, don't put yourself down. You're the city idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> how, on, how on earth did they find you? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I went to length to, to not be exposed or uh, be associated. And then, of course, they, they wrote an article about the padlock and they said, does anyone know anything more about this? Contact us at, and like, 20 seconds later is like someone threw you under the bus <laughs> wonder who that was <laughs> payback <laughs> that being said talking to the uh, I was going to say don't feel sorry Glenn but I, I know you, you don't so <laughs> but the, you're not the only one who's been tipping them off so they have been getting tips left and right obviously so <laughs> really great how was it having someone else filming in your workshop i mean it, it was weird but i could get used to it uh and then of course it's um 
trying to not be too eager um, because, of course, I <laughs> when he was filming and he needed stuff for B-rolls and whatnot, and I was like, I, I tried not to, all right, let me move this. Let me switch on that lights. Oh, I got lights. If you need more lights, I was trying to not be the, <laughs> um, the teacher's pet at the front row. So I was trying to play it casual and probably he had equipment that... Uh, I mean, it's it's better than what I have, so it's it's, uh, yeah, probably like trying to teach your father how to have sex. It's it's uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird scenario. <laughs> I think that's a Norwegian. Is that the only a Norwegian saying? All right, sorry. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, now we got a title, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but I mean that's yeah, it's really great. You deserve the publicity. Yeah, that's. So have the, have all, did they list out the uh, laws that you've broken by doing it, or, <laughs> yeah. or is that going to follow after the article? Yeah, I think uh, small-time YouTuber uh, in jail. So yeah, there's going to be a, a sequence of articles. As I feel. <laughs> no. Yeah. And listen, when you, when you get jailed as well, you know, you've got a particular set of skills as well. You know, I mean, you'll be the guy that's digging the tunnels and stuff. Just thinking so, you the know, same you'll be thing. popular. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we discussed that earlier on this podcast. I mean, if if you get to jail, I mean, you're obligated. I mean, your role as an inmate is to try and break out because the people who are there and the facility itself is built to keep you there. So, I mean, it's it's just understanding your role and, of course... I might have been sentenced for two days community work, but I would be running and then they would have to <laughs> catch me back. All right, now it's a week. All right, I can break out of this. All right, well, maybe we should lock the doors then. And then at some point, I would just challenge, have, challenge myself into being in a high security facility. And then, of course, the the murderers and pillagers and other, and like, what are you here for? <laughs> Put up a love lock on the bridge and then I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing with that rock hammer? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> How long until your wife come and babysit you in your cell? Because you're not running away again because I need you at home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. no. Do you think they still let you have a YouTube Stop channel running. in prison? <laughs> I'd make some... I'm pretty sure would be not. a great content That's there, wouldn't it? Prison tube, yeah. Yeah. That made the yeah, paper recently, the didn't it? A prison video that came out. <laughs> that was in the paper a while ago. <laughs> I think the prison guard lost their job off the back of that oh, one. Really? Right? I didn't see that one. <laughs> the title would be easy, wouldn't it? Behind the bars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, 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 I made knives before, so yeah, prison shanks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh, <laughs> so, so, soap, made... soap and a rope that you don't have to bend down to pick up. I mean, I would prioritize <laughs> some projects uh, quicker than others. <laughs> <laughs> You could uh, yeah. repurpose the Gatling gun to shoot soap, so nobody has to bend for the soap anymore. <laughs> Just shoot them with the soap. That, that, be, that being said, though, a, a lot of Norwegian prisons, uh, I mean, they they have wood shops and everything. So, I mean, it basically would be just as today. I mean, I didn't have to go to work and, yeah. The only downside would be not seeing the wife and kids, but I mean, they have visitor days, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll stay out of jail. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. What a guy. What a husband. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a dad. <laughs> Things are getting quiet, chaps. Should we call it a day? Sounds, Sounds like, like it. it. Since this is my first ever podcast, uh, I clearly didn't get the bladder control uh, pre-preparation because I'm absolutely burst on and I was. I don't know how you guys are doing it. <laughs> I used Bucket. to be terrible, actually. I've got, got a hang of it nowadays. I just wee where I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 See if you've got a bucket. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, John. Oh, thank you. Great. Yeah. No, Good thanks night. for having me, guys. My pleasure. Thanks. All right. Go All away. Right. Good night. Go away. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See ya. See ya.